Hi everyone and welcome back to a uh, snack size video in learning how to use Unreal Engine 4. In this video we're going to cover the topic of event dispatchers, what they are, how do we use them and why would we use them. So an event dispatcher essentially is a way of making blueprints able to communicate to each other without necessarily specifically knowing who is doing the communicating. So we're going to go through some examples of setting it up and what you could use them for and that hopefully will exp uh, help you uh, understand what they're doing. So to create an event dispatcher, I've gone into my first person character by the way, um, you make it on the actor screen, down the bottom left you'll see event dispatchers, it's underneath your variables and you can go new event dispatcher to add a event dispatcher. So I'm going to click on plus event dispatcher and we'll call it test event dispatcher. So this event can be triggered and bound to another actor. So what I'm going to do in my first person character here is I'm going to do the calling here. So I'm going to do a simple tab input. So I'm going to push the tab key, this will fire. And I'm going to drag in my event dispatcher and choose call. So now when I push tab, it's basically going to shout out this event dispatcher has been fired. Okay, so this has done something. Now what we need to do is we create an actor which is going to bind an event towards listening out for this event uh, happening. So think of it like a megaphone. This will shout out and scream out to anyone that's listening and all the actors that are chosen to be listened uh, to this event will then react accordingly. So let's do an example for this so you can see it working. I'm going to create a new actor in my blueprint class and we'll call this one test event. And we're going to open this up go to the event graph and on begin play we need to bind an event to it so to do that we need to get first of all the actual player character because that's where the event dispatcher belongs so you'd get the the player character at the start and cast to them and after that we got the link now towards the first person character which we can drag out and then bind event and we can bind many events but we want to bind the test event dispatcher so this is now going to bind an event that we plug into here towards that test event dispatcher so I'm going to drag from my event pin go down and do custom event and we'll call it test event dis and we'll do a simple print string Uh, event dispatches are useful. So now when I put this into the world, at, when the game begins it's going to get the player character and bind that event dispatcher to that test custom event. That means that event's now waiting and listening out for when that event happens on the player character. And when it does, it'll print the string. So really, really cool stuff. We can communicate now between these two actors and not um, they're, they're not reliant on each other. So it, it wants to set up, that's it, it can, it's done. Um, it's now listening out the whole entire time. Now where can this be useful? Well, we can also on this, uh, do a binding to many other things. One such thing I found quite useful is binding to an event uh, called um, take any damage. And what this means is I would usually do this on a widget and on the widget I can then bind a custom event to this um, called update health or whatever. And on my custom widget this is where I'll link up my player's health towards the UI. So when the player receives damage this will update and update the UI accordingly. That way it is really efficient and not constantly ticking to check what the player's health is. It's just using this bind event here. Now several other bind events, um, which you'll find based on whatever pin you're dragging from. So in this case, we're dragging from the first person character. So we, we see things that are actor generic, like the inputs, when we click on a actor, for example, um, or overlap an actor, which you got up here. But you also got character based ones, such as when you update the movement mode. So if the player suddenly starts swimming, 
you may want to change the UI to me swimming um, or underwater breath, for example. It's stuff like that. Um, if you want to, uh, I don't know, when uh, the player is destroyed or when the actor is destroyed, it can do stuff too as well. Now, you also see the option to unbind events, and that basically undoes this. Okay, so for whatever reason, maybe you want to turn power off of a switch, for example, and the switch, you can tell it to bind and unbind based on what power it's receiving. That way, you can really make it quite dynamic inside the game and not having to constantly uh, check what the player is doing at that moment in time. Another thing you can do with event dispatchers is also pass variables into them. So if you select on your event dispatcher, on the right hand side you can see inputs and here you can add a new parameter. So for example, I can click on new parameter and I type in um, text and we'll put in the type of string and here I can type in whatever I want. So here I can put in um, maybe, um, I don't know, hello. Ryan. So now when I push tab, it's not just calling this event, it's now sending over some data along with it. Then when I go to bind this, I'm again, uh, I need to update this again. So let's put this into bind test event dispatcher. This time when I create a custom event, it's going to bring along that parameter with it. Like so. And I can then use that for whatever I want to use it for. There you go. So I say there's quite lots of uses for them. Um, the time when you want to use them is when you want something to react to um, an event that happens on another actor, uh, but you don't necessarily know when it's going to happen, and you don't necessarily know which is going to happen. So an example I've used in the past is switches for doors. A door I've tied to a switch through just linking it in the editor. And then what I've done is when the switch is activated, it the door is listening out for that switch. So when the switch is activated, the door will open. Something similar like that. And that switch then can be placed anywhere in the level and that door will still open. So I don't have to do any of it special coding, I don't have to do anything in the level blueprint, it will just work for it nice and easily. If you want to see that video, you can search for my doors tutorials and you'll find the doors uh, switch to, uh, tutorial. And that'll just about do it for event dispatches. Thanks very much for watching. If you have any requests for particular nodes or tools inside Unreal and want to know how to use them, please leave a comment below. I'll be interested to see what you want to learn. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.